Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take a, little, a closer look at the amplitude portion of the general equation of the sine or the cosine function. Even though I wrote sine, this works just as well as cosine uh, for the cosine function. So here we have, let's say we have the function y equals 2 sine of k times theta minus b minus 3. So this is the angle and we're then subtracting 3 from the overall sine function. The minus 3 simply means it's going to drop the function by 3 units, so when everything else is 0, y would be minus 3, which is right here below the axis. So this is the 0 point, this is the uh, coordinate point between the y-axis and the theta axis, where the point is 0, so we're 3 units below that. And so now we graph the sine function. Notice that normally the sine function is equal to 0 at the origin, but in this case, the function is being shifted by distance b to the right. When it's negative, it shifts to the right. When it's positive, it shifts to the left. So the sine function starts like this. Of course, it continues. It doesn't stop. It continues like that. So whatever the shift is, it moves it to the right by that many units. The period, of course, is determined by k. The period would be 2 pi divided by k. So whatever the period is from there to there, this distance here would be 2 pi divided by k, which is known as the period. But what we're interested in here is the amplitude. And notice that the function never becomes positive, even though when you go around the unit circle, half the time you should be above zero, the other time you should be below zero. So even though there's an amplitude there, it doesn't mean that the amplitude will ever become greater or that, uh, that the value of the function ever will become greater than zero because in this case it's been shifted downwards three units. Now the amplitude here is two. That means at the maximum value, it'll be two greater than the value in the middle right here. So 2 greater than minus 3 would be minus 1. That means the maximum value for the function will be minus 1 and the minimum value of the function will be minus 5. So we'll oscillate 2 units above and 2 units below this average value and that means the highest value would be minus 1 and the lowest value would be minus 5 and the amplitude is the largest distance from the average value to the peak or the average value down to the bottom here. And you see in each case it's 2 units in magnitude, of course, it's minus 2 going down and it's plus 2 going up. The amplitude usually is in absolute value units. So in this case, you can see that the amplitude up is 2 and down is 2 as well when we talk about the absolute value. So that's what we mean by the amplitude. And so you can think of it as going around not the unit circle, but a circle with radius of 2 units. And so you can see then that this value represents the x coordinate of the point on the circle. So if this is the point x, y, then this represents the x value of that point and this represents the y value of that point. Now, of course, if in this case the y value is two times the sine of the angle, that means when you're up here, this distance here corresponds to this distance right here as, the, as you go around the, not unit circle, but the two unit circle if you want to call it that. So that's what we mean by the amplitude. It's simply the deviation from the average value or the zero value to the highest value and then down to the lowest value. Sometimes people confuse the amplitude the dis between the distance from the, from the middle to the top or the middle to the bottom. Sometimes they think about the total distance from peak to peak. But we call that the peak to peak value, not the amplitude value. So the amplitude is simply the distance from the average value to the top or the average value to the bottom and not the total distance from the lowest to the highest point. That's called the peak to peak value. So that's not the same as the amplitude. So hopefully that gives you a good feeling for what the amplitude is. It, even though the amplitude can be a large number, it doesn't mean that the function ever will become positive. It could also be that the offset is high in this direction. Let's say this was plus 5. Then, of course, plus 5 would be up here somewhere, and then the amplitude would cause the function to oscillate like this, and the, and the function would then never become negative. So the amplitude is not an indication of whether or not the function will be positive or negative. It's simply an indication of how far it deviates from the average value, the value that's at the halfway point between the highest and the lowest point on the function. And the difference from the average value to the top or the average value at the bottom, that's called the amplitude.